Check, check. One, two. All right. And three, two, one, and action. What's up, everybody? It's Tony Tubes. And uh, let's see. It's Sunday, January 26, 2020, 9.49 in the p.m. I did some stand-up tonight at Slackers. It was a good time. It was very interesting. Just the whole... The whole thing about I haven't been out there in a while. I haven't been to to open mic in a long while. Probably like, shoot, maybe since June. I'm not sure. But uh, it's just changed a lot. It, It changed a lot, man. And it was just very weird. You know, like this was the first time. That I and I'm sorry. I'm a, I'm you know I, I get nostalgic sometimes. It's just part of my part of my brain nuggets. But um, you know I I left my house and I was driving down Main Street to go downtown. You know, as a citizen and a resident of Aberdeen, South Dakota, and that was just it was really weird to me because that's the first time I've done that being a resident in Aberdeen in ten years probably. And, and now like, you know, seriously feeling like a resident too, because, you know, we were renting back then and it was, you know, renting in Aberdeen's an interesting situation, but we won't get into that right now, but no. And then I went downtown and I'm standing outside of this building that is right next to the building that my mom, uh, uh, occupied at one point in time with her businesses and all of the (laughs) <laughs> me working there for a number of years and just all of the memories in that building. And now it's an anytime fitness and there's like apartments upstairs and it's just, it's fucking weird, man. But I'm just standing down there and it's like, it was really, really bittersweet, I guess. Nostalgic. I don't know. It was crazy. And then I walked in and, and I didn't know any of the comics, like nobody I didn't know anybody there. My friend Stacy was there, and that was really cool to see her there. I don't think she was there to see me, <laughs> but she was just there, and that was cool to see her there. Um, and then uh, Leslie Bing did a really, really good job uh, with her set and everything, and there was another dude there that actually came in from Jamestown to do it, and that's fucking sweet, dude, and kind of like taking over my role as the out-of-town guy because I used to come in from Redfield all the time. But that's the thing. Is it was just, it was weird. Because the usual guy wasn't running it. One of the guys, I guess, moved away. Another one of the guys doesn't really come around anymore uh, that much. And and just, yeah, man. When I started doing stand-up at Slackers, when they were still across the street, there was a lot of fucking people in there, man. Like, a lot of people in there for that show. Like, and just, it was... It was a cool crowd, man. It really was. It was a cool crowd, a cool scene. And it's just kind of, it's kind of dwindled a little bit. But we had a pretty good crowd tonight. Um, uh, Leslie did a great job of uh, settling down some some inebriated folk. And that was always nice. That's always nice. But, uh, yeah, man. Uh, where's my drink? Did I not bring my drink down? I didn't bring my drink down. Oh, there you are. Okay. Sweet. Oh, yeah. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. But, yeah, Leslie did a good job of quieting down some inebriated people. And uh, and I'd say I landed about half my jokes, Maybe. <laughs> Maybe maybe a third? I'm not sure. And, you know, there's always going to be some. You know, I didn't really practice this stuff. It was just stuff I had in my phone. And I was like, I just want to go try some shit out. And a couple of things fucking landed and everything. And here, I'll even let you guys listen to one of my favorites that that everybody seemed to like pretty well. Check it out. No, but I've been training my kids. We watch, uh, we watch the, our favorite movie to watch together is Mad Max Fury Road. And I love it. My kids love it. We love watching it together. And I've trained them well, man, because I'll be sitting in the bathroom taking a huge shit. And I'll be like, witness me, blood bag! And then I'll hear from multiple rooms in the house, I'll hear, witness! It's great. 
on the Fury Road. But yeah, I'm going to release that. Uh, I'm going to release that fucking, you know, at least some snippets. Maybe just a couple a couple of the jokes that, that landed and stuff like that I'll release and everything. And then someday I'll, maybe someday like I'll release like, you know, the best of. And then I'll release like the worst of jokes that, you know. And then like maybe somebody will approach me and be like, hey, these jokes work, but let's fucking... Let's 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 write it out. Let's let's do this. These jokes work. But we just need to we need to do X, Y, and Z. You know, I would love to have like a a writing partner in certain respects. And uh, and actually, Leslie after the show tonight actually said, you know, hey man, we should get together and write some fucking jokes. And I was kind of taken back by that. No one's ever asked me that before, but I kind of get it. You know, have somebody to bounce off to and bounce off of and everything. But yeah, man. It was a good night. Good night for some comedy and shit. Fucking Kobe Bryant died today. That was fucking, that was just weird to me, you know? Like, I, I feel bad for him. I feel bad for his fucking family. His daughter that died in there and all the other people that died in that fucking helicopter crash and everything. But it's like, damn, dude. Like, that's three, like, and, and you know, fuck Kobe, man. You had, you had some shadiness in there somewhere and... If there's an afterlife, maybe someone's going, what's up with that? I don't know, <laughs> but, uh, you know, but you can't deny that the guy was an influential character, an influential person to a lot of people, you know, same as Bill Cosby. Bill Cosby has a lot of that, you know, fuck, it's Bill Cosby, man, fuck, it puts this a spoon in your pudding pop. But, um, you know, but you, you know, you can't deny that, you know, there's a lot of comedians out there that said Bill Cosby when asked, you know, who did they grow up listening to? Same as same with Kobe Bryant, man. You know, there's and, and that's the third one this year, man. Like, if you really think about it, Neil Peart died. Neil Peart, any drummer post 70s, man, will sit there and say Neil Peart is one of the greatest drummers of all time. And he was one of the greatest drummers of all time. And very influential guy fucking died. And then Terry Jones from Monty Python directed a bunch of Python shit and everything. Founding member of Monty Python and everything. Monty Python paved the way for so much fucking comedy in this world. Very influential person. Kobe Bryant. Lots of fucking basketball players. You know, it was kind of like fucking Jordan, Kobe, LeBron, and now that fucking, oh, that dude <laughs> that was... That's been stacking up against LeBron. God, I don't know sports. But I just, you know, I remember, you know, when I was a kid, you know, you're very impressionable. Everybody's looking at everybody else and saying, hey, do I want to be like that? Do I, you know, what do I want to be into and everything? And, and, you know, a lot of people were into sports and trading cards and stuff when I was a kid. And so, you know, Michael Jordan was it. Like, he was it. Michael Jordan, Scottie Pippen, fucking Phil Jackson. <laughs> fucking Scott Hurd. fucking yeah man like the Bulls dynasty like how can you not remember that shit you know and then it was LeBron and that was at the time when it was like I was getting out of you know the whole I like sports thing like a hardcore I liked the cards I didn't even really watch sports that much but I liked collecting cards that was that was the thing they're all gone now but, you know, but then here came fucking Kobe Bryant. Kobe Bryant was big too, man. Kobe and Shaq for a while there and everything. And, you know, Kobe Bryant, dude. And then, yeah, LeBron James, Kevin Garnett, all that shit, man. But Kobe Bryant was in there as one of those top influential players and shit. And it was just, it's fucking nuts, dude. And he went out SRV style, fucking Stevie Ray Vaughan style in a helicopter crash. What the fuck? That's nuts. That's crazy talk. But yeah, man. And I was just, you know, I was commenting to my wife the other day about fucking shit like that, dude. It's like, God, dude, all these guys, all these, you know, Clapton, Townsend, Van Halen, you know, these guys are going to start croaking here. You know, that's fucked up to think about. You know, Clapton's in his fucking like 80s or some shit. You know, Eddie's in his fucking, like, 60s or some shit, 70s. 
Yeah, all of them have fucking, you know, like crazy, weird fucking drug abuse, probably, you know, that contributed to ruining a bunch of their body and shit, man. It's fucked up, dude. Like, all these people are going to fucking start kicking off, man. It's going to be, it's it's the end of an era, you know, is the end of an era. And I kind of wanted to talk about this a little bit, too. This is kind of off what we've been talking about, but kind of on what we're talking about. But it's like, I feel, see, everybody always gives me shit because of the whole millennial thing. So I don't identify as a millennial. I don't like people calling me a millennial because I think that millennials are people that know, n- do not know of a world without the internet, you know, and my generation does remember a time without the internet. And I think that my generation, the people that kind of graduated, you know, early 2000s and stuff like that, I think we were the last great generation to know what it was like to uh, to, to see the, the social aspect of society. And that was our Facebook. We didn't have Facebook. We just, you know, we went out and we mingled and we did things and, and you know, and, and and now you even hear about like guitar companies like Fender and Gibson, like looking at filing bankruptcy and shit like that. And, you know, Engels music in Aberdeen, South Dakota fucking shut down. Like nobody wanted to buy it, you know, fucking power sound music is still there, but it's in a different building. They don't sell guitars anymore. Like nobody's buying this shit. Everything's digital these days. And I just think that my generation of people, the early two thousands, uh, graduates graduates <coughs> were the last great generation to to see a show and not see a billion cell phones in the air during the show and it's just that's fine you know you guys do what you want man but it's just fucked up to me man it's fucked up like i just i don't it's just really weird I find the world, the changes in the world to be weird because for so long it was a certain way. And then all of a sudden it just has gradually gotten to this point where it's like, everything has changed, man. Everything has changed. And, you know, just from when I was a kid watching my dad gigging around in bands and stuff like that, and bands were a thing, dude. You don't see many bands anymore. And if you do, it's like country music and around here and everything. But, you know, you really got to go to big cities to see that kind of stuff, man. And that's what's that's what's crazy with down on the prairie fucking life, you know. But I'm good with it. You know, I'm good living around it. It's just, it's very strange to me how, you know, we're the last like non-digital generation And, you know, and it's like even other things, man, like Bonnaroo. I went to Bonnaroo 04. Fuck it, dude. That was an amazing, you know, Trey Anastasio, Dave Matthews Band, The Dead. Ani DeFranco, Moe, String Cheese, fucking Primus, Les Claypool everywhere, Warren Haynes everywhere. Fucking pretty sure Bob Dylan played that fucking weekend, too. Something like that. Pretty sure Humphreys McGee was there somewhere or another. Lots of fucking cool shit, man. And and then MTV bought it. You know, and 10,000 Lakes shut down up in Detroit Lakes, Minnesota. And Schwagstock shut down. And just there's like, like the jam band hippies. The quote hippies. You know, my generation of people who thought that it, you know, like the cool kids were the hippie kids, you know. Most of them have drug problems now. But it's just, it's crazy to me, man, how things have changed in the music, in the movies, in society. Like I said, they want me to vote on whether or not South Dakota is going to have legal fucking pot. Like, what? Is this, is this a thing? Is this real life? Is this real life? Yeah, it is. But fuck yeah, dude. It's crazy shit out there, man fucking crazy world I got these, these kids were growing up in and I'm trying to keep them not so digital but it's hard because I, I'm digital man you know 
It's crazy shit, man. But yeah, fucking a. I did a did some stand up tonight. It's always nice. Soothes my soul. Soothes my soul. To do some stand up. So yeah, got to go back to work tomorrow. My buddy who I work with said he was sick tonight, so hopefully he's not sick in the morning. But if he is, then that means I got to do it all by myself, and that'd be my first time doing it myself, and that's that's gonna be nuts. But yeah, man, I'll, I'm I'm ready for it. New job, new house. Fucking hey, dude, it's crazy. Taxes are coming around the corner, so we get to pay some bills. Get to pay some bills. It's gonna be nice because this is the first tax return we've gotten in a while. We've been docked because we've been in debt collections with our student loans and stuff, but we whipped it up into shape, man. We got paying on those and everything, so everything should be copacetic this time. But yeah, man, it's just, it's a crazy time for me. Everything's, everything has changed in a very short period of time. And so I gotta, I'm trying to adapt. That's what I'm doing. And my friends have been really good. Matt, Jules, fucking my buddy Peel. Lots of good, lots of good people doing good things. And uh, my friends, the 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 Chris and the Chris's and the Crawfords and stuff. They did a they they did me a solid man. You know, let me stay with them while we closed on this fucking house. And uh, yeah, man, it's crazy, dude. It's just crazy. And now my nephew's having kids and my cousin's having kids and like all these kids. Like I said in the last one, just kids everywhere. Kids, kids, kids. But yeah, man, check it out. I'm going to drop the fucking, the video possibly, you know, not the whole thing, but I'll, I'll drop some clips tomorrow or something like that of my show tonight. And it was just, you know, it was a little... You know, probably 20 or 30 people in there, but it was nice. Nice little crowd. It's my it's my coping mechanism going and doing stand-up. I was a little nervous tonight, though, because I didn't know anybody, really, except for Stacy. But that was cool. I did, I did all right. <laughs> sometimes jokes land, sometimes they don't. So, anyway. All right. You guys take it easy. It's 10.07 p.m., 1.26 to 20. 2020 20 whoa but yeah man you guys have a good night have a good week it's gonna it's gonna be a tough one <laughs> my job is tough it's gonna be a tough one but we're gonna make it through it have a good one guys peace out tony tubes the fortress of solitude now in aberdeen south dakota <laughs>